Hello again everybody. This one's all about building the neck and for me um, that starts quite early on in my workflow because um, one of the first things I do is for the scale length that I've uh, decided on for a guitar and the strings I'm going to use I have a machine or a jig which measures the amount of uh, string compensation I'm going to need at the saddle end and the nut end and in particular the nut end um, that affects the effective scale length which obviously has repercussions down the line in the building process so um, I saw the fret board as one of the first things I do and that's a few weeks ago now and um, I've managed to delete the footage of the machine or the jig which I used to to cut the fret slots so I'm sorry about that um, but you'll see the rest of what I do to, to make a neck. As you can see, I'm into the finishing process already. This has um, got grain filler and stuff on it. Um, I still need to, to do all the, the finishing, but basically the, the process of getting to here is um, what you'll see in this video. So I hope you enjoy it. With the body finished, I can now um, start thinking about the neck. Um, and one of the first things to do is um, to check the neck angle so that I can saw this part at the correct length and the correct angle so that okay the truss rods in the way but um, you get the idea uh, so that the strings will arrive at the correct height above the top of the guitar and for this I use this neck angle gauge again another idea I got from the internet somewhere I think this arm swings um, this is going to be the join of the guitar and you set this to the where the saddle is going to be um, so this is half the scale length in other words there's a couple of bolts here um, you set this one to the height of your fretboard plus the frets which normally for me is seven millimeters or so. And you set this one to the desired height of your bridge without the saddle. You basically, I haven't set these up yet. But this is how it operates. That's, it's upside down, but it's 89.3. So 0.7 of a degree off a right angle for a saddle, a bridge height of uh, 11. Obviously on my chop saw I can't um, dial in 0 0.7 degrees. Um, one degree is the lowest resolution, sorry, the highest resolution it has. Um, so I've calculated that a, a shim, two and a half millimeter shim placed here will give me the right angle but I'm obviously going to make, take a test cut shy of the mark to make sure that it's um, parallel to the mark so the right angle before I do the final cut. I've got a nice clean cut now on the face of the heel um, but there's more to be done because the top of the body is rounded so this flat heel won't seat properly against it so what I need to do is cut out a section in the middle a millimeter or two deep which will allow this thin strip on each side of where I'm cutting to bear against the body I've got the holes drilled in the body for the bolts to go through onto the heel so I have to mark now the position of the heel on the heel that the bolts will come through at so
Now that the inserts in the heel block have um, dried, I'm able to screw the neck onto the body for the first time and it's looking pretty good. Uh, those two bits of tape at the bottom are where I've marked the line of the truss rod to check the alignment of the neck down the center line and the neck is is almost bang on it's um there's a couple of millimeters it needs to come this way which means basically i need to sand a little tiny bit off the this side of the neck where it joins the body because that's the high side so i'm going to try and get the neck fitting correctly now before the fingerboard goes on because it's much easier to do I've just sawn the bottom of the heel off um, and planed it flat because I'm going to put a heel cap of ebony on eventually but before I glue that on I want to fit the neck um, along the its boundaries with the side or the, the back of the body and to do that I need to cut it down to very close to its final size here and to do that without and not lose the markings I've made here for the basic shape of the heel I have to first cut the heel shape across its full width then I can trim off this end to bring this level down to very close to the final dimension then I'll be able to check the fit of the neck on the body and refine it and I can do all that before the heel cap's glued on and I've also shaped the what will be the heel cap so that when it's glued on um, the, the curve here conforms to, to this curve so it'll it'll be a, a tight joint. Now that the heel cap piece has been glued on I've spent a bit more time um, playing around with the fit of the neck joint or the neck to body joint I should say um, and I'm happy with it for the time being there might be a little bit of refinement later on but um, Basically there's little or nothing left to do. This is how the um, fingerboard gets screwed down onto the top because I, I'm not going to glue it down. Um, there'll basically be a piece let into the end of the neck, call it the neck extension, um, which will sit in a pocket which is routed into the top of the guitar and into the block that's underneath this part of the top. Um, it allows you to have what Trevor Gore calls a bolt-on bolt-off neck. The thing I use to route the pocket is uh, this which I've made up. It exactly matches the uh, what will be the fretboard extension piece and there's a it keys into the truss rod slot so that will be clamped down I'll route the pocket and then this um, piece which came from the back of the neck uh, sorry the back of the headstock I'll use to make the neck extension piece I've noticed there's a very slight discrepancy between the line of the neck and the line of the body. Here it's very small but uh, I'd rather get it um, completely uniform now before the pocket gets routed.
it's been cut and the um, fingerboard extension piece fits is a good fit into it. I've uh, brought through the position of these two holes. I'm going to put these uh, T-nuts in on the top here. So the next job is to put a small recess in which will be deep enough so that these I'm going to take these um, sort of tines or whatever they're called spikes off uh, because they're not needed. Um, I'm just epoxy the the T nut into a into a recess and then obviously drill out the hole this one uh, larger so that the uh, bolts can come through and and screw into them. This time it's a first for me but um, because normally I make this um, extension piece thicker um, I'm actually going to cut through it completely so it will effectively be two extension pieces. The slot is underneath this so basically I'm going to cut right through the piece here but it's effectively two fingerboard extension pieces whereas normally it's one when it's thicker. It doesn't need to be thick because most of the work pulling the fretboard down is done by the, um, or the support is given by the lock inside the body. Okay I've marked it up. What I'm going to do basically is cut the first half before I glue up, leaving this to hold these in the correct position and then once it's glued in um, so the first cut will go to here then it's glued in so these pieces will be separate. Once it's dry I'll flip it over and cut the rest away on the other side. I think that's the easiest way of doing it. So here's the final two piece fingerboard extension in place and I'll fit the truss rod So I will glue the fingerboard down very shortly but just before that I'm going to glue a little fillet of wood above the truss rod so that the there we are, so that the um, fingerboard has wood to wood contact for it when it's glued down. just going to make a negative template of the uh, headstock so I can place it on the copper and decide where <coughs> where I actually want the headstock cut out from I quite like to get some of the, the blue This is the stage I'm at now and I have a decision to make. Um, I've been toing and froing about it ever since I knew that I'd have a copper metal front piece on my headstock. Um, I want to glue it on now um, before the fretboard because um, the end of this and the nut determine where the fretboard starts. Um, the decision is how best to shape the headstock um, because 
copper and Spanish cedar are as such different materials. Copper is a soft metal, but it's still a, a lot harder than the, the wood, of course. I can't decide, and I've changed my mind even just before filming this two or three times, whether I can't decide whether to shape the wood first. The copper at the moment is slightly oversized. You can see I've marked out the, even the pencil line is slightly oversized because that that's on the outside of the template so eventually I'd remove even the pencil line. So I can't decide whether to get the wood to the exact shape I want and glue the copper on oversized and then file that down or do the inverse which is to shape the copper exactly right, glue it onto the wood and then use that to um, perhaps with a pattern route a bit um, to use the copper to shape the wood. The only option which is not an option is to try and shape both exactly and glue one on, onto the other. I know from experience you, you'll you never get uh, an exact match so you have to do the final finishing of the two simultaneously, whatever. Um, but it's, and I, I know I'm probably overthinking this, I mean either would work I'm sure, but I just can't decide which is the better one to choose and I'm literally paralyzed by indecision at the moment but uh, the time has come I have to make a choice and just do it um, for the rest the the fingerboard sorry the fr um, yeah the fingerboard will go on very soon and then um, I can start shaping the neck well I decided to go the way of um, shaping the copper to within just outside the pencil line, shall we say. I'm going to glue it onto the wood, which I'll also cut down to on, on the outside of the pencil. And then the final fit will be done by hand when it's um, glued on. just to do a sort of sanity check on the um, bridge height to see if everything worked and without the frets on we're at ten and a half millimeters which means with the frets on we'll be at eleven and a half which is just about exactly where I want it to be so I'm quite happy with that. The other thing I should probably do before gluing the fretboard on is cover up the uh, knot on the fifth fret, which you may remember from a couple of videos ago. Um, I've brought out my collection of mother of pearl dots, um, 
and I think because it's just the one that will be the only feature on the front of the fretboard I'm going to make it a six millimeter one which is quite big might even be a quarter of an inch I have to check um, but I think that's going to look quite nice and it will definitely disguise the the knot no it's six millimeters so that's nice and easy because I can I'm going to drill a second very thin hole right the way through the fretboard where the dot is so that I can fit the dot and then push it out again before gluing danger with these is always that they're a tight fit and you can't get them out again if you've misjudged the hole. Okay now that is a very tight fit so if I've got the depth wrong I'm not sure I could even push it out I'm gonna go and find a 6.1 or 6.2 millimeter bit and just enlarge the hole finally ready to glue the fingerboard on. I've um, got my little locating pins which are um, just two millimeter toothpicks so I'm certain that I can glue it in the right place there's no play and I've got a core ready which is I've put some tape on but there isn't enough of a, a camber on it to uh, to press the edges down properly so I'm going to use this sort of plasticky stuff to put more pressure on the edges. Got to be careful not to get glue in the holes here. Here's the fingerboard after gluing up, it all looks fine, needs a clean up obviously but um, the next job while this is still um, in place and I can grip the neck easily in the vise is to start shaping the heel and then I can cut these bits off and start um, shaping the rest of the neck. the finished neck. I'm quite happy with the, uh, the shape of it. The heel is quite nice and uh, delicate I think. Um, it's smooth. I've still got a little bit of final sanding 
on this to do before I can start finishing. And there are a few other jobs as well, like um, the side dot markers for the frets. I've got to clean up the fret slots, particularly where the, the little um, dowels went in to locate the, uh, the fretboard, fingerboard. Got to drill the tune holes still. Um, that's about it actually. And then I can um, put some a wash coat of shellac, do the grain filling and um, start the finishing process. On the side of the headstock here, you can see there's this, um, obviously this stripe of copper and the underlying um, thin plywood. I'm going to disguise that, not leave it as it is. Um, and I'm going to do a test on this off cut. Basically what I plan to do is to put some grain filler in there first to smooth it, uh, sand it off and then put um, Indian ink on so it'll be a very deep black. So there'll just finally be a thin black layer along the top of the headstock. Um, I'll mask off the wood and try and get that line as clean as I can and it might even from the side kind of sort of mimic the fretboard because it'll be a dense black. So that's the plan. I've been trying for a while now to um, get the Indian ink to stick onto the copper. I've um, put a layer of shellac on which normally fixes anything in terms of finishing in my experience um, but it still doesn't want to stick so basically this is not going to work with Indian ink. I'm going to try now, I'm going to sand this off, perhaps recoat with um, the grain filler. Then I'm going to try acrylic paint, maybe that will stick to the grain filler. Um, so here's hoping. Finally, here's the edge of my test piece. This is with um, the acrylic paint and that seems to have worked perfectly well. As you can see, another mistake, this time when I was drilling the tuna holes, and I honestly don't know how this one happened. What I did was uh, I marked out from the template on the face side, and those holes are all good. I drilled through with a, a very small bit, about a 1.5 millimeter or something, just to give the, um, the Forstner bit coming through from this side a guide. Um, but somehow I must have not put the, the point of the forcing bit quite in the right, in the hole that came through from the front. And so this hole was misaligned. Uh, all the others are perfect. So what I've done is on the lathe, I've, um, from a scrap bit of the, the Spanish cedar that the, or the whole neck's made from, I've turned a 10 millimeter plug, uh, glued it in there. Um, I'll flatten it off when it's dry and it will be undetectable in the end. It'll be hidden by the tuner and the wood is all the same anyway, so it'll have no impact at all on the final instrument, but it just shows how careful you have to be at every stage, still making mistakes. Here's the um, tuna hole after re-drilling. It's just possible to see the, the edge of the plug, but uh, really it's, it's not a big issue and it won't, it'll be hidden behind the tuna, as I said anyway, so uh, it's all good.
So, the end is in sight, um, it's down to the finishing stage now, but you've probably noticed the guitar hasn't got a bridge on it. Um, I finish the guitar top first, then glue the bridge on afterwards, obviously removing any finish that's uh, under where the bridge is going to be glued on. I've got the bridge blank here, It's um, the footprint is final, but the bridge needs shaping. Um, so that together with the finishing and um, stringing up and set up will be in the next and final video. So until then, goodbye for now. <laughs>